But it's a good thing that our walk is not about feelings. Yeah. Is that our walk is about what? Faith? So I like the song. I can feel the presence of the Lord, but feelings change a little bit. I'm glad that I walk in Christ Jesus is a walk of faith. So even if I don't feel I'm going to praise him. Amen. 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 I thank God for the praise team. Y'all show some. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. I can feel the presence of the Lord. And I'm going to get my blessing. Amen. Amen. I want to say good morning to each and every one of you. Welcome to the City of Restoration Church. We're not a perfect church, but we're progressively, progressively pursuing perfection in Christ Jesus. You know the Mark Jordan. I pray that you came today with an empty vessel. For God that we love and serve is ready to pour into that vessel. He's ready to answer your prayer. The Bible says if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, that you can speak to that mountain, be thou removed, and it shall be removed into the sea. He says, if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, don't you know that I walk in Christ, I'm obedient, God's word is by faith, that we believe what he says and we act upon what he believes. And so I know today that God is going to answer your prayer. He's going to encourage you in this walk. He's going to remind you of his goodness and his mercy. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your provision. We thank you, Father God, for Jesus the Christ. We thank you, Lord God, for his obedience. Obedience not to the world, but to your command. We thank you, Lord God, that he set a perfect example for those who are to follow him. We thank you, Lord God, for the empowering of your Holy Spirit. Your word calls him a wonderful counselor. So Father God, I just pray, Lord God, that heaven will agree with what is about to take place today. I pray, Lord God, that you would have your way. There is nothing more important for the children of God, for the people of God, for the fathers of Christ in these times. Nothing more important, Lord God, than our faith in you. Or some today may be asking the question, Lord God, increase my faith. Someone may be asking, Lord, help my unbelief. But in the asking, I pray, Lord God, that they believe that you're able to do so according to your will. I pray, Father God, for that soul who do not know you're in a part of their sins. I pray, Lord God, that the spirit of God will convict them right now. And that they will receive your word with gladness. And they will ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Draw them now, Father God, I ask. By your spirit to your only begotten son. That they may receive and experience abundant life. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. 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 At this time, we want to dismiss our young people. Amen. Y'all show some love for our young people, man. Amen. 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 They are ready to, they are ready to hear from God. Y'all continue, continue to encourage our young people. Amen. Amen. And um, y'all know that, that the young, the young people. I don't know why y'all sitting next to y'all parents. Y'all know where y'all belong. Amen. To my right, up front. Amen. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. I had to come get you. They hear better up front. Amen. They hear better up front. Yeah, that's the pastor. See, the thing about it, we've been conditioned to sit in the back. We've been 
condition, but this is our this is our young people. And if they don't get it firsthand, see them second and third chairs, that's what they call filters. <laughs> that's a filter. When you, when the first you get it first, and then the chairs are filtering the word. So you want the young people to get it straight up front. Right then and there, because it's important. It's important for them, especially in time like this. Amen? Amen. A time like this, amen. Amen. Is, is it that cold in here? Okay. Turn the heat up a little bit. Amen. Just a little bit. Just a real little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Mark, what are you saying? Because, you know, we, yeah. yeah. Amen. I'm excited today about what God is going to do. Heaven has already agreed. And the Spirit of God is already working. I was sharing with the church um, that we had the last time I stood before you all, I was bringing the message of, are you in need of a fresh start? And I told y'all the next time y'all see with me, see me, I was finished then. Amen. That's what I said. Amen. But the good thing about being a servant of God, listening to his voice, being obedient. He's going to do it his way, and it's going to bring about results. God, the results. So I was preparing everything, and yesterday, I was telling my wife, I went in, and this morning, the Lord woke me up and said, that's not what I want you to share with your people, with my people. And I said, well, that's what I want. Y'all don't talk to God like that. I said, that's what I want, God. He said, but that's not what I want you to share, because I know what my people need. And God knows each and every one of our needs. And he knows exactly where you are right now. And so the question to ask is, what do you do when, when you are going through a time of discouragement? What do, you do, what do you do when you're going through a time of discouragement? What do you do when your walk with the Lord has become dry and plain? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do when you are experiencing a season of doubt, a season of despair, a season of de de dejection? What do you do when, when, when you are simply just going through the motions and life has lost its meaning? But what do you do? What, what do you do when you are going through these things? When I are, when we are going, when I'm going, when we are going, what do you do? When these things are happening, when we experience these difficult and sometimes desperate situations, we must be reminded and also encouraged that our hope in our God is the way through these difficult times. We, we must be reminded and encouraged that our hope in our God, because we know for those of us who have been Serving God just for a little bit and reading his word, we know that there are many gods out there. Yes, sir. And I didn't mean M-A-N-Y, I mean M-I-N-I. -I. <laughs> there are many gods out there. And, 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 and in the times that we find ourselves going through this discouragement, this dry place, this dark place, when we're just going through the motions, there's something that is at that is at risk or threatened right now, and it says that when we're going through this, we have to be reminded that our hope in our God is the way through. I believe one of the most precious gifts that God has given us is hope. Have y'all walked around and found and looked at people that that are that that you know that they're hopeless, and some of us are sitting in the house right now. Uh, we're going through the motions, but we uh, we have no hope. And, and you can say, yes, Pastor, I do, but I believe that your speech and your actions betray your statement today. For those that have hope, they walk differently. Those who have hope talk differently. Those who have hope know how to give that hope back. And like I said before, one of the greatest gifts that I believe that God has given his children is hope. Amen. After all, that's what his promises are designed to do, right? To inspire what? Hope. 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 So if, 
If you don't have hope today, if your hope is lacking, you are in the right place. Amen. Let me get this out of the way now. Turn that heat back. <laughs> it gives us the ability to look at any situation. It gives us the ability. Hope gives us the ability. Hope gives us the ability to look at what? Any situation. And know that regardless of how it may appear, God is going to do what? Come through. Amen. Hope gives us the assurance to knowing that no matter what I am facing, no matter what I am going through, hope tells me that's in God. Jehovah. All right. Not the general God. I'm talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth. That, that's the God that I'm speaking of. Elohim. Right? He says, he says, inspi inspires us to, to, to look at our situation, no matter how difficult it is and, 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 and how bad it may be coming upon us now. Hope tells me that guess what? My God is able to bring me through this. That's right. That's right. This is the essence of what hope is. However, as my man say, Franklin, Eloisius Mumford. Mm -hmm. However, yes. if I could be honest with you and I today, the challenges of life can sometimes seem too much. That's right. Too much for me to bear. Too much for you to bear. Too mm -hmm. much for us to bear the challenges. I know because guess what? I faced some of the same challenges that you have faced. I've encountered some of the same valleys. Mm -hmm. I've been tempted by some of the same temptations that you have faced. I've dealt with a lot of loss, personal loss that you have faced. I have dealt with encountered disappointment, hurt, betrayal, lies. I've encountered them all. But in all of that, the hope, my hope, in God may have wavered, but I never stopped believing that's that God right, was that's there. Right. See, when these challenges, life situations, and storms of life attack us, the thing that they often come after is our hope. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that's what's wrong with a lot of us? Mm -hmm. Today, I know we like to blame other people, places, and things. Right. But what's really missing is you have no hope. Mm -hmm. And a person that has no hope will do, say, and believe anything. My God. Mm -hmm. My God. And God says, I am the hope of the world. The message this morning is entitled, Hope in God. <clears throat> what, what have you and I placed our hope in? Yes, have we placed it in money? Have we placed it in family members? Yes, I'm going there. Yes, sir. Have we placed it in our spouse? Have we placed it in the people that we know? Where is your hope yes, at people of God? I'm not speaking of the world. Yes, but where is our hope as God's children? And we can't mix this hope with the hope of the world. No. We, we talked about this in Sunday school, and I'll make it plain today for those that are hearing under the sound of my voice. Sometimes God says no. That's right. That's right. And we know that God's no is our protection. But I know we have been conditioned in the church and the people of God to get this word from God that's going to agree with our rebellion. That's right. Come on. We want to fall under these leaders that's going to agree with our sin, that I can still serve the world and God going to bless me. No, that's not the God of it. Abraham, say Isaac, it. and Jacob. Say it. Their God may do that. Mm -hmm. But God says, I'm a holy God. That's right. Say it. And, but most people understand hope as wishful thinking. Anybody been there? <laughs> no. uh, don't we? Uh, I hope this happened. Oh, I hope this happened. And I hope this will happen. 
But that's worldly hope. That's right. Yeah, that's Come right. on. Hmm. This in the lesson. We're going to deal with this in the message. That's what the world says. Well, I hope. Yeah, yeah. I hope this happened. This is not what the Bible, the word of God means by hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The biblical definition of hope is a confident expectation. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. For the Bible, the word of God. Tell them to turn that off. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It says the hope. The biblical definition of hope is a what? A confident mm -hmm. expectation. Are you confident? Am I confident in the God that I serve? Am I confident that when I make my request known unto God, that he's not going to give me what I want? Yeah. But I'm confident to know that God is going to give me exactly what I need. And not only what I need, Emmanuel, but what is in his will for me to have. That's hope. So he tells us here, hope is a firm assurance regarding things that are unclear and unknown. It's a firm assurance, even though I don't see it. Even though I can't feel it. My hope is in a God that knows all things. Turn with me to Psalms 42. Look at Psalms 42. Numbers 1 through 11, please stand in reverence to God's holy word. Hope in God. And, and we have to realize as we get into this psalm, I want to encourage you and to remind you that the author of this psalm, this psalm here is the sons of Korah. For those of us that study the word of God and will study the word of God, Korah himself rebelled against Moses. The book of Numbers. Korah had some sons. And even though the father rebelled, the children stayed obedient. That's right. That's right. Somebody gonna get this. That's right. See, see, even though the father rebelled, Korah rebelled against Moses. Mm -hmm. The son said, "No, David, we are gonna stay committed to you." Mm -hmm. See, see, where's your hope? Your hope is in your family members. Mm -hmm. These sons knew better. Even though their father rebelled against Moses, the son said, "No, we we're not gonna do that." That's right. We so they so they penned this song. And it says, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Look, look, look at him. See, look at him talking to himself. Mm -hmm. My tears have been my food day and night. While they continually say to me, where is your God? Have you heard that from those on the outside? Yeah. Those that are half committed, you're going through all this. Where is your God? Yeah. And number four, he says, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me, for I used to go with the multitude. Mm -hmm. This is going to help somebody that's sitting at home right now that got a full tank of gas, it, good it. health. Yeah. And, and the house right now said, look, I know you can, you can hear it from there, but sometimes he says, I remember when I... I remember I used to go with the multitude when I went with them to the house of God. Come on, come on. He said, I remember when I went to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept a pilgrim of feast. Yes, sir. He says in five, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? What did he say? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Do y'all are you there yet? Hallelujah. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill of my czar. He says, Deep calls unto deep, and the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night, his song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Mm -hmm. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Somebody there, right there. Come on. Right there. Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say to me all day long, where is your God? Number 11 of Psalms 42 says, why are you cast down? Oh, my soul. He's speaking to himself again. And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my continence and my God. You may be seated in the presence 
our Lord and Savior. The writer of this psalm is like many of us today. We're in a dark place. We're in a dry place. Our hope has dwindled down. The writer here is experiencing some doubt right now and some dejection and some rejection and, and ridicule. The writer here is at the time in his life when his physical and spiritual life is on empty. Come on. And many of us know what that's like, don't we? Because we've been there. We either there, going through there, or just came out of there. Where our physical and our spiritual life is dry. Where are they at? Where is this writer at, Pastor Mark? He's in a dark place. He's in a dry place. But I want you to see what this writer did. And what we as God's people that truly hear from God himself. The writer of Psalms 42 is going to reveal to us what we must do when and not if we find ourselves in a dry place. He's going to show us in his word what we must do. In Numbers 1 and 2 of Psalms 42, he says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts. That's the dry place. He, he says, not my feelings. He said, but my soul. He said, the real me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, come on, come on. Yes, the real me. Mm -hmm. not, not this outward thing. Mm -hmm. Not this flesh. But the real me, my soul. Because I've already known and I believe the word of God says that my dirt, this body going to return to its dirt. So I know this is going to be my soul. The real me. That's right. Amen. It's thirsty. Mm -hmm. It's hungry for your presence. I'm in a place now where I feel like giving up. Come on. I, I'm ready to throw in the towel. I'm tired of all this foolishness and all of this hypocrisy and all of this death and all this despair. I'm tired. I am fed up. Every corner I turn, somebody is <clears throat> broken. Say it. And it's affecting me. Mm -hmm. He says here, he says, my soul pants for you, O Lord, just as a deer pants for water. A deer pants for water when he has been running. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And, and somebody today been running, mm -hmm. running hard. God is saying, "Come, you know you're running, mm -hmm. and you're getting thirsty now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're thinking that hops and barley and trees and smoke and all that's going to satisfy your thirst. No, not this kind of. Run. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, not that. Not this. Not this. Run. You're running, and you you're going at all these earthly things to try to. Quit your thirst. Come on. He says, no, this, this thirst that's happening within you right now is a thirst that your soul requires and needs, but it can only come from living water. That's right. Amen. That's living right. Water. That's, that's right. right. So it says the deer has been running, perhaps running to safety, mm -hmm. maybe just tired, but definitely in need of some refreshments. Mm -hmm. And when the deer experiences this, they move as quickly as possible to take care of that thirst. Guess what they want? They want some water. Yeah. Yeah. You ever seen a deer? I'm, I'm going to help somebody today. If, you, if you're able to track them one day. You know, nine times out of ten, when a deer is crossing the road, they're going to get something. A mm -hmm. drink. Mm -hmm. You'll never see a deer cross where it's a dry place. That's right. That's right. Amen. Say it. They know that there's some water on the other side, so they're they're running and 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 and, and they're thirsty. So so this deer runs to a place where water is, mm -hmm. a place of refreshing and what restoration. Mm -hmm. in, in in verse three of Psalms forty two, or number three in Psalm forty two, he says this is what he says. He says, "My tears have been my food." Day and night, while they continue to say to me, where is your God? Now, I like the message version of this. The message version says it like this. I'm on a diet of tears. Tears for breakfast. Tears for supper. 
all day long people knock at my door pestering me. Where is this God of yours? Come on, come on. The psalmist says, I've just been eating tears mm. in the morning, eating tears, mm. and after eating tears, I, and that's many of us in here right now. That's right. That's right. Your pillow has become so soaking wet with tears. Mm. Yeah. You're sleeping with a plastic bag now. Mm. Now, instead of going to the place where you can get some relief, you would rather just cry. Thank you, Lord. He says, the writer here is too troubled to eat. Anybody been there? Mm -hmm. now, that's what he's saying. I'm walking slow. He says, I'm too troubled. This despair, this dejection, this rejection, this abandonment, this hurt, all this is too much for me. I don't even want to eat. Mm -hmm. Have you ever lost someone? Coast. And you lost your appetite. Yeah. Yeah. You, you didn't want to eat mm -hmm. anymore. It's just, it was gone. Mm -hmm. God is showing you that's what happens when we fail to come to him in a time of despair. That's right. We know where the nourishment but, but all right, but yet still we'll go the opposite way. And he says, this writer here said that I've been eating my tears all day long. I, I want to eat, but I can't. Only thing I'm eating is this sorrow. He says the tears are a stream, streaming down his face. He can taste them constantly. And to top it off, not that, and this is just like this is just like us. To top it off, not that he's going through my sister, but people are still not messing with him. Yeah. They, they just won't leave him alone. They just gonna keep. See, that's what the enemy does. The enemy just don't want you down. He wants you out. That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on. That, that's that's why he always he separates. Mm. He isolates before he assassinates. He always he don't just want you down. He want to take you out. And instead of being like the deer, running to the water, we'll just stay where we at, hoping that it's gonna rain. It ain't rain there. The water is over here. What do you wait for? See, that's the thing. We want God to accommodate our. Hmm. Come on, say it. We want, I can get it here. God said, that's not where I'm at. That's right, that's, that's right. right. Come that's on, right. come on. Right. I, 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 he, I want him, he said, that's, that's all. He said I'm, I'm telling you, I'm in my house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at. He says here that, not that he's down, but he says these people saying, where is your God? They're watching him. Don't you know that some people watch you, wait for you to just. It's amazing. We keep them same people around us. Don't? Uh, say it, say I'm not talking about people. This ain't a mess about people. I'm just talking about what the enemy does. Say it. Say it. He says that they're watching him and they're mocking and criticizing him, badgering him, and doing so, they want him to just do what? Give up. They want him to do what? Throw in the towel. Matter of fact, Job, I hear you. They want him to, they want you to curse God and die. And that's what happens when we are despair. They, they, they want you to just curse God and die. Don't y'all know Brother Joe, when he was going through so many difficulties, he had lost his farm, he lost his house, he lost his cattle, he lost his whole family, he lost what? Everything. He lost his health, he lost his friends. But his friends came and said the same thing, didn't they? His wife said what? Curse well, I'm going to curse God and die. That's right. And that's what I'm saying with you. You better watch where you place your hope at. Come on, come on. See, see, I love my wife, but my hope is not in my wife. That's right. That's right. My hope is in God the Father. That's right. He says here, it says, and it says, even his wife turned against him and said, Why don't you just do what? Give up. Why don't you just curse God and die? And too many of us, when we see that someone is going through their dark place. Brother Jay, we speak from our position, our viewpoint, our feelings, and our truth. When we see someone going through a dark place, we speak from our viewpoint. Mm -hmm. We speak, Jay, from our position, and we speak from our truth. Mm -hmm. huh. We all know that person, a person who says, I'm just stating the obvious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. I'm just speaking the truth or my truth. If you really want to be delivered from your dark place or you love or your love one delivered you truth and it didn't work, stop giving them some time. Stop, stop entertaining that false doctrine. 
Hmm. That false teaching. That's right. He says here, stop giving people your truth when you see them in a the dark place. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Stop giving them your truth mm -hmm. and your viewpoint on the matter. That's right. Because evidently, when the tape is rolled back, they're going to see your story too. Uh -huh. See, because it's easy for me to give you my truth and my viewpoint because I'm not going through what you're going through, but yes, I am. Yes, come on. Because misery loves company. That's right. That's right. And the enemy knows, guess what? You locked up, so you want other people locked up. Have you ever met someone that when God has started to move in your life, it's always them close ones that get mad and jealous and say, yeah. you're going to change. Yeah. And you should be celebrating God say, that praise the Lord I have. Yeah, yeah. That I have changed because of Christ, but I ain't going back there. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Thank you, Lord. Can't you see these people pestering this right in here? Saying, where's your God? As I mentioned earlier, stop giving speak, speak it. God, stop giving speaking your truth and start speaking God's truth. But you can't speak his truth if you don't know the truth. Mm -hmm. right. don't, don't you know that's why many of us in the church are still say in bondage? It, because it. we've been listening to other people speaking their truth. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Say it. But because we have placed our hope in them mm -hmm. instead of in him. Go to John chapter 8, 31 through 32. John chapter 8, 31, 32 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who what? Believed him. Mm -hmm. Can we stop right there? He said, Then Jesus said to those Jews who what? Believe, Believe yeah. him. Mm -hmm. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall do what? Make you, Make you free. Mm -hmm. So what do I do when I find myself discouraged, depressed, deceived? Now, he said, look, I can't depend on your truth. That's right. Come on. I can't depend on God because I'm no longer your slave. Mm -hmm. When I was in the world, I believed everything the world told me. That's right. Amen. Amen. Everything. Right. Was, if I was you, I'd go do this. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. If, if I was you, I'd go do this. You haven't promised, well, I'll do this, I'll go do this. And then you go call some more people just as blind as you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. And make sure they got a title with it. They did this, they blind too. Yeah. But as God's people, we need to understand that God's truth, his word is his truth. Hallelujah. He says here, that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you what? Free. Free. Let's go back to Psalm 42 and look at number four. Look, well, look what he says when I'm going through these things. Look what he says. I'm going real slow. He says, when I remember these things, what did he just say? When I remember what? These what, things. What things? That his God. Mm -hmm. see, see, the problem with, the, with, with us, the followers of Christ and the people of God, we, we don't know the truth. Mm -hmm. And so we're recalling something that somebody done told us. That's right. Say it. But it's not been proven. That's right. It, it's, it's been passed down, people of God, but it's not been proven. That's a dangerous thing. To, 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 to follow and to take on something that has never been proven. Uh -huh. God's word has been proven. He says, I am the alpha and the omega. I'm the beginning and the end. He says, my word has been tested That's right. That's and right. proven. Uh -huh. So he says in Psalm 42, when I remember these things, he says, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude that kept the pilgrim feast. Now, look at the message version, what he says in Psalms 42. Y'all got to get this message. It's, it, 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 he says in the message version, these are the things I go over and over, emptying out the pockets of my life. I was always at the head of the worship crowd. Come on. Anybody, well, you remember how he said, come on, come on now. Come on. See, I told you, I'm, I'm telling you what happened. That's why I encourage the young people to come up front because we've been conditioned to sit in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you know that you used to be what? You used to be up front. You used to, anybody used to be on fire for the uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, in a little trial, a little tribulation, call you to question a little bit. Oh. No, I got some hope, some hope, some hope. But he says, I was always at the head of the crowd, worship the crowd, right out front, leading them all, eager to arrive and worship, shouting praises, singing thanksgiving, celebrating all of us, God's feast. He said, I used to be out front. Now, remember, the sons of Korah came from the tribe of the Levites. Yeah. So that's what their responsibility were. They yeah. were right, right, worshipers. Worship. So he said, but because of my situation, I, I, I no longer want to be up front. And see, that's what sin does to people uh, of God. I know. Sin causes us to hide. That's right. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. See, Say you it. can pretend that you're free, but the, 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 the enemy gonna deal with that sin that you have yet to confess before Come the Lord. On. So it's hard for you to, to walk boldly before the Lord it's because on. God, the enemy gonna always remind you of what you have done yeah. or what you were doing. You were doing. It ain't my right. fault right. that you locked up. That's yeah. right. Come on, Jesus. Amen. So the psalmist here, number four of Psalm 42, remembers how he used to go with the multitude to the house of God. Oh. Y'all remember that? Those that are 35, 40 and over, y'all remember back in the day? Man, we used to just what? Church was always, you know, he was just excited. No matter what you was going through. Matter of fact, you would just leave. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just got out 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right? You just got out, remember? No, hold on for a minute. Listen to me. It didn't matter. Headache, hunger over here, my grand. You walked, you came in the house of the Lord. Saying. Because you saw someone that was committed. Mm -hmm. And what they had, you wanted to. You knew that. You knew you were wrong. Anybody been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but the thing about it, when you had that stench on, you didn't sit up front. Tell you sat in the back. Uh, See, that's what sin does. See, sin calls you to yeah. sit in the back. Yeah. When, you get, when you start smelling clean and fresh, yeah. you want everybody to smell it. But when you stink, you sit in the back. Right. I ain't calling nobody stinking here. That's I'm just right. saying that's what happened. That's right. That's because right. sin and disobedience cause us to. Say it. But a situation has caused them not to even feel like going anymore. Number four, he says, I don't even feel like going to church anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't, in other words, no, let me, let me change, let me rephrase it. I don't even feel like going to the house of God anymore. That's right. Yeah. I, I don't even want to work. I want to worship by myself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our situation will cause us not to want to worship God anymore or be around people who worship God. But the writer remembered how much joy he had. Right. When he went to the house of the Lord. That's what the scripture said. He yeah. said, I remember. Do y'all remember? Mm -hmm. See, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. The young people, they, they don't know. But some of us remember how much joy we had. Mm -hmm. And we never did this when I was growing up. Uh -huh. Because we were just praising and worshiping That's God. Right. That's right. We was going for it. And everybody was, was on one. And you know, I'm just saying, yeah, you had issues. But guess what? We just knew that Christ was the center of where we came. That's right. And it wasn't all this other That's stuff. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so he says, because I'm experiencing this, he says in number five of Psalms 42, 5a, let's go back there. He says, why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? He now poses a question to who? Himself. Have you ever asked yourself a question? Huh? Okay. Have you ever asked yourself, why, why did I do that? Yeah. This, is, this is what he's saying. Have you ever asked that question after you've done something? I don't know why. I did that. Why, why did I do that? This time he says in verse 5, he's asked a question. He says, why are you downcast, oh my soul? Another verse that says, why am I so depressed? Mm, yeah. That's what he's saying. Mm. Why am I so depressed? Why am I so discouraged? Perhaps you have asked this question before or asking this question now. It's a common question that many believers ask, believe it or not. Why? Because no one is exempt from going through the valley of shadow of depression or discouragement uh -huh. or doubt or death. No saint nor sinner. It says here, but the saint, the people of God has someone within them. The Holy Spirit of God. A power, a person who is greater than their darkest place. Right. Come on. Thank you, Lord. I told you before, I can't share your testimony, but I can share mine. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I know what it means to be in a dark place and not because somebody talked about it. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. I know what it means to be in a dark place, not because I didn't have a job, I didn't have nothing. No, I'm talking about a dark place. Yeah, yeah. Because those means can be met. That's right. That's right. But in the darkest place, in the darkest of your soul, the only person that can give you relief is God. God. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he says here, when I get discouraged, when I become depressed, when my soul thirsts for that living water, what must I do? The answer is in 5B. Look what he says. Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. So just like the deer when he becomes tired and weary and thirsty because of running from whatever is threatening his existence, I too, you too, we too should do what? Run mm -hmm. in hope. Walk in hope. Crawl in hope. Mm -hmm. Cry in hope. Why? Because we know where 
our help comes from. Verse 6, number 6 of Psalm 42 says, Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will do what? Remember you from the land of the Jordan sure. and from the heights of Hermon and from the hill of Mizar. The, ver the message version of Psalm 42 says like this. He says, when my soul is in the dumps. Yeah. Come on, I love this message version. He said, this is what he says. When my soul is in the dumps. I rehearse everything I know of you. Come on. See, see, we always remember, you know, remembering all of those stuff what people have done. Yeah. And see, that's what's wrong with us. Amen. Us. I didn't say y'all us. When we go through something, we always try to remember what somebody else has done for us instead of what God has done. Yeah. And see, if we always, if we if our hope is in people, when people stop meeting our needs, then guess what? So goes our hope. Mm -hmm. But when you keep your hope in God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm trying to help somebody today. Yes, sir. Where, where does your hope lie? Does your hope lie in your job and your financial and your economic? That's your hope. I get that. He said, but we should hope in God because all those other things are going to fade. I promise you. There's people that's been living a whole lot longer than us. It's gone on that experience and face the same thing you face. It is nothing new. Right, right, Sam? My brother said, it's not, it says it's nothing new. It's just new to you. Yes, sir. So what we're experiencing right now is nothing new. Yeah. It's just new to you. And so he tells us here, he says, when my soul is in the dumps, I rehearse everything I know of you from Jordan depths to Hermon heights, including Mount Miser. Number seven of Psalms 42 says, deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. You see where he's at right now? He's in a place now where he believes that his God has left him. That, that, that the despair and discouragement has become so powerful. He's having a conversation with God. Mm. You ever had a conversation with someone they told you they were going to pick you up and didn't? <laughs> okay, let me make it plain. See, I, I got to give you a different situation. I'm talking about some place where you want to go. I ain't talking about going to no club. Ah. I ain't talking about going to Walmart. Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about that because you can I hop that place. Yeah. But I'm talking about to a place where you know you need to be. Yeah. And you had made up your mind. You said, I'm going. Mm -hmm. And they said, I'm coming. And you know it. And, and they didn't show up. How did you feel? You was upset, but guess what? You did not block their number and you still kept them as a friend. Come on. You were mad for a season. And God is saying, how come you were upset with me? Right. When you would take back something that can't even, somebody that won't even give you what I can give you. You will you, you tell them, I'm sorry in a minute. You forget, but with me, you done with me. Oh. You done got, you know, we done went back on back to the world now. You done got mad at me because things didn't work out the way you want to work. So now you mad. Now you're going to go back out in the yeah. world. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Come on, Lord. He says here in number eight of Psalms 42, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me. You see what he's doing now? That's what God, have you ever said, I'm not going to make it? I'm not going to make it. And then you remember who you were. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the spirit of God changed that conversation, changed that confession. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? He says, he says, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his son shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. Look at the message version of, of verse eight. He says it like this. He says, then God promises to love me all day. Sing songs all through the night. My life is God's prayer. You see what he did? In the midst of him complaining. In the midst of a speaking of a situation, the soul remembered the God that he served. That's right. That's right. The soul remembered the God who made him. He says, he says, then God promises to love me all day. And some of us stop right there. Hmm. We're going through discouragement, defeat, disappointment, setbacks, but the spirit of God, you're not giving God spirit enough time to remind you of what God has already done. And so he tells us here in verse 9, now that he has encouraged himself. And y'all know that's what y'all need we need to do sometimes. You hear people say the word says, encourage yourself in the Lord. So you can't encourage yourself in the Lord if you don't know him. That's right. Say it. Say it plain. You, can, you can't encourage yourself in the Lord if you don't believe him. That's right. See, I can say I'm encouraging myself in the Lord, but if I don't know him, then how am I going to encourage myself in him? You, you have to have a personal relationship with God. He says here. In verse 9, I would say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Isn't, see, you see how stuff changed? 
It's not us sometimes, Lord, I believe, and two days later, no, not two days. No, not, not two days. Two minutes. Lord, I believe. No, 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 no. We're laughing, but it's true. It's true. Because I'm trying to help. Because see, guess what? I go through that too. Yeah. But guess what my soul says? See, my soul, I have to have a talk with my soul. Because my soul, who is now renewed, refreshed, who's new, knows where my help comes. That's right. And so he says, first he was saying, God is my prayer. My, then he's verse 9, he says, oh, I was saying, God, to God, my rock. I'm asking, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppressions of the enemy? The message version of number 942 says, sometimes I ask God. My rock solid God. You see how he probably got it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you see what he said? He says, Why did you let me down? Are we there? Come on. Why am I walking around in tears, harassed by my enemies? And sometimes my enemies are myself. Sometimes my enemies are my past. Sometimes my enemies are my thoughts. Why am I being harassed by my my thoughts have put me in a place now where I want to give up? Come on. I want to throw it in time. Why are you letting me down, God? Am I the only person that ever asked God that? Why are you letting me down? Once again, we usually ask this question when we see a friend who seems really blessed. <laughs> yeah. We usually ask this question because we start giving our, our resume, Sister Jordan. I come to church every Sunday and I Go to Bible study every Sunday. I feed the homeless and I help this and I close it. And they ain't doing nothing. Wow, they being blessed. And I'm doing everything for you. And I'm struggling. Come on, come on, come on. Say it, Lord. Yeah, you ain't got to say it, man. Because <laughs> I've been there too. Uh, come on. I'm doing all this stuff for you. Yeah. Look at us. Yeah, Look yeah, at yeah, yeah, got yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And all God has to do is say, <laughs> But he says, we normally ask this question when we see Friends of ours who seem blessed. Mm -hmm. Seem now, seem. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Things are going really well with them, and yet we know that they've been living like the devil all this time. All this time. And because we see the cause, the clothes, the money, the status, the position, we start saying, well, maybe I made a mistake. Oh, or not that, maybe I just want to side God. Oh, because I see what this God has given them, so I want this. And I hear it all the time. Don't you hear these false prophets and pastors and teachers telling you that prosperity, physical prosperity, is a sign of God's favor over your life? That's right. Oh, yeah. They sure do. They sure do. And now because the rent is due, you thinking God is not for you? That's right. God says, as he told the man, I allowed this to happen to you mm -hmm. so they can see the God that you serve. That's right. Come on, Jesus. But, but he says here that they start saying, well, look at them. They're getting everything. Every day. Every time they call me, somebody they're blessed. I've been praying for a job. They had three of them. <laughs> I've been praying for this. I've been praying for this. And every, every time I turn around, they, the guy said, what, what are you doing? What, what's your motive? What's going on with this? What's going on with this? He said, Lord, have you forgotten about me? Have you forgotten my address? Anybody been there? You know what I'm saying? You start checking your, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, wondering when it's... Have you forgotten where I live? Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been there. The psalmist asked, why must I continue to mourn? In verse 10, number 10 of Psalm 42, he says, as with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say to me all day long, and with that question again, where is your God? And see, sometimes we believe people of God in the midst of our trials and our tribulation that we need to help God out. And the enemy will present it to you like it's from God. Say it. Say it. Say it. <laughs> See, one thing about a letter, when you're reading a letter, one thing about a letter that's written, you got to check the author. Because uh, sometimes we read letters and think that make it think it's for us, but it's not. Y'all remember how y'all used to take y'all girlfriends and <laughs> boyfriends' letters? You know, you know what I'm saying? They, they tell you, read this. And you start reading, like, oh, yeah. He really loves you. But he didn't write it. Right. <laughs> Somebody else wrote it. Oh, 
And that's why when they make all these promises, y'all better get this. <laughs> Come on. When they make all these promises and 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 and, and, and their actions don't match with the promise, they let you know I didn't write it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. <laughs> and so God says, I've written you a letter. 60, 66 Six books. books. Uh -huh. A love letter. Uh -huh. Telling you how much I love you, telling you, let you know that guess what? Keep your hope in me. Now somebody else is gonna write you a letter. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna tell you you can get it fast. Mm -hmm. wow. But on. I'm gonna let you know that it's gonna take some time. Yes, Lord. Don't lose hope. Thank you, Lord. In verse 10 of Psalm 42, in the message version, it says here, they're out for the kill. These tormentors with their obscenities, taunting day after day. Where is the God of yours? You know, you know how many brothers and sisters of the faith have abandoned their hope in God mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and have gone back to the world and they're painting a picture like everything is good. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I know their soul is thirsty. Mm -hmm. So don't get caught up in the picture yeah. or the smile on your Facebook. Hmm. Say it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the post. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because what you see mm -hmm. is not what really mm -hmm. it is. That's right. That's right. And that's why we're drawn to that. Yeah. Y'all didn't know that, right? Always. That's why we're drawn to this. Always. This, because some of our hope is in this. Come on, say it again. Some of our hope is in reading somebody else's post. Uh -huh. And they say, oh, yeah, I've been there. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And so now you're going to start scrolling for yeah, yeah, yeah. that person. And then you know that person that messed up because you don't see no more posts from them. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. But with God, God said, let me tell you something. My post oh, never, never changed. changed. Come on, say it again. Oh. Yes, Lord. And so he says here, once again, according to verse 10 of Psalm 42, once again, once again, the writer is talking to his God about his dire situation. He is saying, my bones hurt. Anybody been there? Mm -hmm. Where it's been so excruciating, the, the setback, the hurt, the disappointment has caused your bones to hurt. When you know that you can't, that you're looking for peace. Have you ever hurt so bad that you've been amongst people that were having a good time and you tried to have a good time with them, but your bones hurt so bad that you couldn't hide? And so he's talking to his God. He says, my enemies are making fun of me. Don't you know your enemies are making fun because you made up your mind that you were you're going to serve God? And they're making fun of you because they're coming over there with their pockets full. And they're nice car and some nice shoes and nice jewelry and they're saying I'm blessed look at me I am blessed beyond measure and you're still serving God and you're thinking your situation your physical things is a sign that God is not with you God says that's not how I roll because if the truth be told Matthew 4 tells me that Satan himself told Jesus Come on. If you bow down and worship me, I'll give you everything. Come on, come on, come on. And so in verse 11 of Psalm 42, he says, he's asking the question to himself, why are you cast down, O oh my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? He's asking this question in the message version. He says, why are you down in the dumps? Anybody been down in the dumps before? Mm -hmm. Dear soul, why are you crying the blues? Uh, you know when we in the dump, we don't have, we don't listen to I'm blessed in the city. No, no, no. Uh, I, 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 I saw you let you change it. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Come on now. Come on, listen to me. Listen to me. When we're in the dumps, our song selection changes, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't we don't sing Jesus be a fence around me every day. My mind is made up. Well, our playlist changes and the artists change. Oh, 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 come on, Lord. Because we want somebody to relate to my what we going through. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so he says here, I'm crying the blues. What can I do? Here it is. 11B. Fix my eyes. Fix my eyes uh, on God. Make a plan. Make a plan. Soon I'll be praising him. 
Somebody need to be thanking God come right on, now. Come on, come on. See, yes, see, Lord. I know, I know. Yes, Lord. See, because unbelief and doubt make you believe it's not real. That's right. That's right. But let me tell you something. Right. It's not if when, it's not if you go into the storm. It's, it's when. when you're going. When. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's not if you get discouraged. That's if you, you feel it's when that happens. When. He says, "I fix my eyes." You, you know what he mean? I fix my eyes. He's like, he's looking beyond. He's looking. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. He says. I'm gonna fix my eyes on God. And remember, we talked about, about, about what, what hope is. It's the assurance. He says, and if I keep looking towards God, he says, soon I'm gonna be praising him. Uh -huh. if, if I keep my eyes on God, soon, it may not be happening right now, but soon, sooner or later. He said, I'm going to be praising God. And then guess what that does? That put a smile, smile on, my face. That's on my face. I can tell you my testimony. I heard it before when my mother passed away. And, and it was it was hard. It's still hard. Because everybody know me knew I was a mama's boy. There was no secret. Mm -hmm. And my wife came in and prayed and, and tried to console me. And, she, and I love my wife. She tried hard. And I looked in her face and I told her, you can't help me. There's nothing that you can say or do to help me right now. And I know that hurt my wife. Because my helpmate wanted to be the helpmate. Help. Yeah. But she got to realize something that this darkness and this despair, I mean, human wisdom, human encouragement can't fix this. And when that happened, I fell on my knees and I cried out my soul. My mother didn't come back. But God says, I'm with you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Thank you. Y'all going to get this. That's right. Thank you, God. Uh, she didn't get better. She didn't get better, but God says, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, people of God, I had the same choices and option you had. Mm -hmm. I could have called up some of my friends that are still in the world. That would have taught me, look, all you gotta do, brother, just sip on this a little bit. Right. So calm you. I got, I got that, I got that access. I, I still hang with, I still know them, because I want them saved too. Right. But the Spirit of God in me says, Come to me. Draw nigh to me. He's saying, Hope in God, verse 11 b for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. In the message version, he says, fix my eyes on God. Soon I'll be praising him again. He puts a smile on my face. He's my God. Who puts a smile on your face? No, who puts a smile on you? Good question. Yeah. But y'all get all spiritual. <laughs> right in there. But there's somebody in Patterson. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't say that mama here. <laughs> Who puts a smile on your face? Don't you know there's some people that just put a smile on your face? When you see them, y'all come back. Because <laughs> y'all married now. But there's somebody just you just said. Mm. And it wasn't so much of their physical appearance. It was the presence that said. Man, I love to be around that person. So whatever you are facing right now, give it to God. Mm -hmm. Ask him to walk with you all the way through. Not part-time. Brother Jacob, sometimes we want God to walk with us until our needs are met. Right, right, right. And then we'll say to God like we say to other people, I'm good now. Oh. But ask God to walk with you all the way. And whatever you do, people of God, never give up on God. Yeah. When all seems lost, we can always count on the faithful presence of our Lord and Savior. When everything begins to fall apart, our question is normally, where is God? Because during these times, God seems so distant and even uncaring. Are we there yet? Have you, have you been there where you believe that, and I believe, and we believe that God is uncaring and don't care about what we're going through?
Because the truth is, God will never abandon his children. God will never, you hear me, abandon those that are his. The word of God tells us that Christ is in us. He is the hope of glory. Because we have Christ in ourselves, we have this hope that no one and nothing can take away. Yeah. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39, the apostle Paul penned this to encourage those who are in Christ. He penned this question, he says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Did you hear the sons of Korah say the same thing? That my enemies are doing what? Mocking me. He says here, yet in all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors. Through him who what? Loved us. For I am persuaded. Somebody need to be persuaded today. Somebody need to be persuaded no matter what you're going through. That neither death nor life. Nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Neither height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to do what? Separate me. Separate us from the love of God, which is where? In Christ, in Christ Jesus, Jesus, our Lord. Lord. So what is hope? What is hope? In one word, everything. Yeah. For if we lose hope, we have lost everything. God wants to restore your hope today. Hope in whom? In him. Hope in what? His promises. Hope in what? His word. And I can hear you saying right now, Pastor Mark, you don't know my situation. Hmm. I don't know. Nope. But God does. Yeah. And that's why he challenged me and told me to give you this message. Yes. No matter what your situation is, hope in God. Look to him today with confidence and assurance, knowing that he will help you in your time of need. You can put your full hope in God. Amen. Full. full. Not three quarters way. You know how we walk and when things become well, we don't need God. That's what happens. Come on. Don't you know that's what happens? God answers our prayer and we say, I'm good now. I want to go back living the way I want to live. And God says, let me let you know something. Without me, you can't make it. You won't make it. Go to Hebrews chapter 6, 13 through 18. Hebrews chapter 6, 13 through 18 says it like this. For when God made a promise to Abraham, I, I told you now, hope in God. Now watch this. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. Mm -hmm. not, 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 watch this now. Watch this. I know y'all reading already. But watch the one. What is this? He said. The creator made a promise to Abraham. And because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. In other words, he says, I can be trusted. Yes. Saying, listen to me. Surely blessings I will bless you. And multiply in I will multiply you. And so, after he had what? Uh-oh. Highlight that. After Abraham had patiently... See, he re listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen. He heard the promise. But he didn't get ahead of God. Because the one who promised it, he knew that his word was his bond. And God is saying, what have I promised you? See, the reason why you're disquieted, the reason why you're, you're, you're broken, the reason, because you've been listening to the promises of the world. And they don't let you down. Yes. That's why your head is hanging low. Yeah. That's why it's hard for you to give me the praise. Because you've been thinking, you've been listening to these people telling you they can make a way for you. Uh -huh. 
on, they gonna hook you up. Come on, they gonna get you've been listening to them. But God says, look, I made a when I make a promise. Yeah, yeah. I, I you can depend on me. Yeah. But he says, after he had waited, endured patiently, he endured, he obtained the promise. Oh. Now, Pastor Mark, what are you saying? You just talked about hoping God. Yeah, but it's taking long. He says, then you need to patiently endure. That's right. Amen. And, and what you need to do is, thank you, Holy Spirit, you need to remember what God said from the beginning. Yeah. See, because sometimes we allow circumstances, situations, trials, and tribulations to cause us to have a memory lapse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever got to the point where you got desperate and took matters into your own hands? Yep. I mean, you look at that description. Yeah. <laughs> My God. You read it right now. Still you read right now. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart. <laughs> Lean not to your own understanding. All your way. Now you're looking right at it. But yeah, go ahead. Do this for me. Yeah, take care of that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Trust in the Lord. But no, okay. Okay. But I'm going to do it this way. Trust in the Lord. Right. No, but this is what they told me. Trust in the Lord. Amen. But but it's working for them. Trust in the Lord. Amen. You see everything they have? Trust in the come Lord. On, come on. Come on. Amen. It's taking too long. Trust in the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody, I'm telling you, I'm going to have this, I'm gonna have this to the wall crack. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So he says here, and so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Look at verse 16 of Hebrews 6. For men indeed swear by the greater, mm -hmm. and an oath for confirmation is for them and the end of all dispute. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. Thus God Determined to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath also. Mm -hmm. That by two immutable things in which it is impossible, 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 impossible for God to what? Lie. It is what? Impossible. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. It's impossible for God to lie. Yes, Lord. We might have strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Yes, Lord. It's impossible for God to lie. It's impossible. Pastor Mark, what are you saying? If God said it, you can trust his promise. If God said it, and, and not through a TV show, and not through a friendly quote, and not through your favorite preacher, teacher, pastor, Artist, musician, movie star, not because of that, but because of what is written. What is written. Amen. And see, it makes a difference. It does. Mm. It does. When you hear someone tell you they love you, yes. then when you read. Because uh -huh, uh -huh. these words will endure forever. That's right. And when I forget, brother Deshaun, how much God loves me. When I forget because of my circumstances, when I forget because of what's going into me, I have to go back. And read it again. I was going through some of my old things in the closet, in the attic. And I found some letters that my wife wrote me. In 2006, I believe. And it was still good. Because I, I, I get letters from her. I, I, I don't shred them, you know. I get them and I just keep them. I just put them in there. Just keep them in there. And I was using them, you know, as bait. <laughs> I know y'all don't do that. Oh. Because I know it's going to get rough. That's, you know, you know, you know honeymoon first. Yeah, oh, you love you, everything. You know, birds singing, sky's blue, you know. All the food tastes good. You know what I'm saying? You know. <laughs> so so, so you, start, you start writing all these letters. And she start writing these letters how much she loved me. And she adored me. And, you know, this, that, that, and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, Jay, I was, you know, oh, you know, I, was, I got married when I was a little younger. I'm older, you know, so I, I'm, you know. Put it all together. Then one day I was cleaning out the attic, bringing stuff down. I found them letters, you know. And, 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 and I opened it up and I said, man. I started reading it. I said, man. It's just all beautiful. Beautiful. And, 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 it, and it encouraged me that, guess what? Man, she really yeah. does love me. Yeah. And don't you know God allowed that to happen? Yeah. Somebody yeah, gonna get this yeah, in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Because we weren't all good at that time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we go work in and we have a little spat, dispute, whatever, and we go and start doing some stuff. Mm -hmm. And God said, open that box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 Praise yes, God. Thank yes, Lord. Lord. Uh -huh. <laughs> and see, that's what love does. Uh -huh. Love covers a multitude. Even though I was 
best man hot. Y'all know Morris. Uh, uh, <laughs> Even when I was best man hot, the thing was red around me. He said, I opened up that letter and I remember. She said, I love you. <laughs> and no matter what, so and so, I'm like, Lord, thank you. And God says, I've given you a letter. Yeah, and I just told you my word that guess what? It's impossible for me to lie. That's right. That's right. Come on. So if God has said it, you can trust his promise because it's impossible for God to do what? Lie. And this trust, therefore, becomes an anchor for the soul. One of my favorite songs my brother used to sing is my soul is anchor. Yes. See, now you can see that and hear that differently. Mm -hmm. He talks about the billows. And all the, he said, but my soul is anchored where? In the Lord. In the Lord. No, 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 no. In his promises. Mm -hmm. My soul is anchored even though the billows, the roar, the sea may roar, and the billows, the billows rage, and all that stuff. Even though it's rough right now. Somebody say it's rough, Pastor. Come on, now you gotta admit it first. It's rough, Pastor. Man, it's rough what I'm going through right now. He says, My soul is anchored in the Lord. And anchors are designed. I've been on a ship, I was on a ship for a year and a half in the Marine Corps. And, and the anchor is designed to keep you steady. Say so you will not be moved. In the ocean, when I was in the Corps, I was in the ship for, we was overseas for a year. I was on the water for a whole year. Water. <laughs> and we ran into some rough seas. Yeah. They were so rough, brother, that we all got sick mm -hmm. because we weren't used to storm. Mm -hmm. And you know how they give you these little things back in the day yeah. behind your ear. But when I was in, I looked like a college player that had made a lot of tackles because I had them all back in. <laughs> it got, got to a point where, where, where it got to a point where earthly man-made solutions wasn't gonna help me in my time of storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought if I got more stickers, I could have more medicine. But guess what? The storms got rougher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and they stopped working. But the captain said, "I got a way to fix this. Yeah, yeah. Because I need those Marines." Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I got away. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna drop anchor. And when I drop anchor, it's gonna hit at the bottom. Yeah. And it's gonna the water's still gonna move, but the ship won't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God is saying today, in the midst of your hopelessness, He says, drop anchor. Yes, yes. Don't don't go. See, you gotta realize one thing. I, I'm done. You gotta realize one thing. Some of us are selling through waiting on calm seas. Because uh -huh. somebody told you. It's going to be all right. Well, maybe it won't be. I know you serve. Say it again. These people got you serving this God with a happy ending. But maybe it won't be the way you want it to work out. But in the midst of the rough seas, in the midst of betrayal, in the midst of lies and deceit, in the midst of brokenheartedness, in the midst of despair, depression, God is telling you and I today to drop anchor. Right. That's That's right. Right. Anchor down in my word. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I just opened up to Isaiah 59. It wasn't planned, but 19 says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the yeah. spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard yes, against him. Yes, sir. Yes. Are you anchored? Yes, Lord. Don't anchor in man's opinion. Don't anchor in philosophy. Don't anchor in your own strength. Anchor in the Lord. It says anchors are designed to keep you steady so that you will not be moved. This anchor that is impossible for God to lie is the foundation of your certainty and the backbone for your hope. And y'all know one thing my mother used to tell me all the time, boy. She says two things she hates. And all mothers say this. A lot of things. A lot of things. Yeah. I think that's in the classroom. Come on, come on. All the mothers, mother, I know this, but you so so but one thing I hate. <laughs> it's a lot of things. But all she was doing was speaking from uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it says here that God says I can't lie. And so he tells us here is the reason why you and I can have hope today. What is the reason, Pastor Mark? Because God says what? I cannot lie. I call this type of hope in spite of. And some of us need some in spite of hope. Some in spite of hope. In spite of what you see. In spite of what is going on. In spite of how dire the situation looks. 
you can have hope because God cannot what? Lie. 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 Regardless of your situation, find out what God has said about it. And not what I said, but what God has said. Mm -hmm. And let that be the truth you believe about it. This does not guarantee that your situation will change immediately. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of hope, according to the writer of Psalm 42, is that even if the situation remains, so does your hope. That's right. Amen. Because of hope, you have confidence, knowing God will respond and come through on your behalf. Why? Because you are his children. If that is what is, he has said, you can be certain of that it will come to pass. So if God is your father, mm -hmm. the one who cares and loves you, as we wrap up, you just heard from God's word about hope in God. You heard of his truth today. You heard of his truth. And you're sitting right now in the midst of your despair and darkness and hopelessness. And you're saying, Pastor Mark, what must I do? Because you're, I already know that I don't know what's going on, but he does. Hebrews 4 and 16 gives you an answer. And it says it like this. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace. To help in time of need. Let us come, therefore, boldly. And when you come to God boldly in prayer, it's not based upon who comes with you. To come boldly is to have the assurance that the God that you serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that made male, and out of male, he made female. Mm -hmm. The God that says they need each other. Mm -hmm. The God who established a covenant marriage between Adam and Eve. This God. He says, if you're in need, come to me boldly. Because now you not only believe, but you know that I'm able to give you peace and hope in the midst of your hopelessness. Because the, the word of God says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. And you know what a throne is. Can I help you right quick? The problem is we don't recognize. Hmm. I'm going back to my, one of my favorite movies. Morris says, you know, you better bow down and recognize his strength. Hmm. Y'all remember that scene? Hmm. And see, we don't got so casual with the Lord now. Hmm. We don't recognize his strength because we've been listening to others. Come on, Amen. come on, come on. But to realize that God is, is sitting on his throne. Yes, sir. You just don't walk up to God any kind of way. Mm, yeah. He says we come boldly before him, but in humility. Yes. Because we reverence what? His power. That's right. His greatness. Yes. And his word. Yes, so God is saying to you and I today, if you're going to come, come boldly but also in humility. That's right. Reverence who God is. Then he says that we may obtain mercy and find what? Grace. 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 To do what? Help. Help. In time and time of need. Yes, Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this word. Your word. We thank you, Father God, that you allowed us to eat from your table. And as your servant, I know and believe that this word would not go out and return to you void, but it would accomplish what you have set forth to accomplish. I thank you, Lord God, for every soul that received this meal and that they would fix their eyes on you that they will remember your promises and that they will understand, Lord God, that they that come to you must first believe that you are who you say you are, the great I am. I pray, Father God, for that soul who is still undecided. They're still looking for evidence. But you told us today in your word, 
And it's faith that moves you. And it's our faith in your word that will move us. So, Father God, as we close out this time, I pray that the souls of men will strengthen today. And that they would not place their trust and hope in man, but they would place it back in you. And for those who have abandoned you, Lord God, those who have placed their hope in people, places, and things, I pray that they will come to you boldly, that they may obtain mercy and experience your grace in time of need. We thank you, Lord God, for this time. In Christ Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Did not God speak today? Amen. Yes, he did. One thing, one thing. Yeah, that's a good place to sit. Let me share some with you. Um, I, I, I know, I know from experience that God is proactive. Pastor Mark, what are you saying? He's proactive. He's not reactive. Every time God allows his service to stand, it's to prepare you for what is to come. Listen to me. God is not reactive. So for those who receive this word today, hide it in your heart. Because you're going to need it. That's the kind of God we serve. Nothing surprises him. Amen. Amen. Our young children, they're back there getting a good lesson. And so we want to thank you all for being with us as we wrap up and be ready to close out. Um, we're going to wait out for our children to do their come in for their review. Letitia, can you give us the announcements? Is that all right? Yes, sir. We want to do things in order because we have something we want to do today before we leave today. Amen. All right. These are your announcements for the week of February the 5th, 2023. First, on this Tuesday, we will have Bible study. And Bible study will be um, in-house as well as on Zoom. And you can always find the Zoom link on the Facebook page or actually one at church. Also on... Okay. Also on Friday the 10th, Mr. Jay Keller has a senior night at 7 p.m. Amen. Right. And his mom has asked that if anyone is available, that we go all come up together and support Mr. Keller. Um, this Saturday, the 11th, we will have Sisters Encouraging Sisters, and that would be at 10 a.m. And on this Saturday, the 11th, there will be a birthday celebrated by Mr. Raphael Hines. We have, the pastor has mandated that starting on this, I'm sorry, starting on the fourth Friday in February, which will be the 25th at 6.15 p.m., CRC will hold their first um, marriage ministry, okay? And this is for all those who are married and who are wanting to, desiring to be married to come out, and it will be a time for fellowship and teaching, and FYI, no children are allowed. None. None. Nada. Okay. All right. So our website, tcrchurch.org, there you will see our statement of faith, our visions and values, church covenant, as well as giving. Um, you can give online or through the church, as well as um, our, we are still in our annual building fund. Okay. So if anyone would like to give towards that, please do not take any cash directly. Advise them to go to the church or as well as send them to the website. Okay. Amen. Keep in prayer all those who are sick and um, shut in. The Wesleys who are for Traveling Grace, the Browns, um, Pastor Tober, as well as the Halls who are currently sick, and um, Shayla and the boys. Okay. So these are your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Thank you. So while we're still recording, let's bring our young people up because <laughs> after we do their introduction, we're going to stop recording and we'll recognize our visitors and birthdays and things like that. Y'all show some love for our young people. Right now. Okay, so our lesson, um, the title of our lesson was God's Help in Hard Times. It's coming from James 1, 1 through 8. 1 
first question is, who is James? I can't. Jesus' half brother. Right. And James was led to write a letter. Who led James to write a letter, Mariana? Uh, Who led James to write a letter? God. Who got? God. God. And who was James writing this letter to? Jewish people. Jewish believers, right? And what was the letter about? They have a testing coming up. They have a testing coming up. So the letter was to uh, help people understand that testing will come? Okay, so um, when we are tested, what can we ask God for? Okay. Wisdom. And wisdom, we know, is more than intelligence, right? What is wisdom? It's knowledge to use it in a proper way. Right. God has given us his word to help us to live right. What else has God given us, my John? The whole... The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's and what right. is one of the reasons God gave us his Holy Spirit, Mariana? To help us uh, wake up. To help us pray for, to, to help us pray for something when we don't know uh, what to pray for. Right. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. Does God ever tempt anyone to do evil? No. And no. No. And what does God do? Tests us. Who tempts us? The devil, Satan. Okay, so, my job. What does the devil tempt us with? The bad stuff in our heart. So, how can Christians make sure they do not commit sins against God? Maria. Remain faithful and all times. Okay. Like the crowd of life. Okay. I say, how can Christians make sure they do not commit sins against God? I don't know. To pray to God. To remain faithful to Him when we are tested. When we're going through tests and trials, we have to remain faithful to Him, right? Okay, so what does God promise uh, us when we endure hardships, when we endure tests and trials? What does God promise us? Wisdom and the crown of life. The crown of life. That's our lesson. Amen. 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 Give me the mic. Give me the mic. That's not half the stuff we talked about. If you, if, you are, if you are a visitor here for the first time, 